Hey guys, I have some sad news today. As you can tell by the title of this video, Nearly Headless Nick has suddenly and unexpectedly passed away. We don't know what it was from. Um, it happened about a week ago, but I just honestly wasn't able to film this until recently because we are still struck by 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 the loss um he was fine he was basking and he was using his new enclosure he had recently learned where his basking spot was and seemed to have adjusted to his new environment and he was fine one day and then the next i went in and i checked on him and he was limp basically and he passed away about 30 minutes later so we brought him to the vet and the necropsy didn't show anything other than the obvious injuries from his lawnmower accident everything else seemed normal to the vet so we even the vet isn't sure it could have been from long-lasting effects from the lawnmower incident finally taking their toll on his body or it could have been from the fact that he was a natricine uh, natricines are snakes in the subfamily nat natricinae some argue that they are their own family altogether of natricine day but anyway natricines are your smaller snakes like um, grass snakes and garter snakes water snakes red-bellied snakes smaller snakes that are either semi-aquatic or they eat unusual prey items, you know, other than rodents. They'll eat things like invertebrates or fish or amphibians. They also include decayed brown snakes, like the little babies that we have. All these snakes, all these natricines, have very fast metabolisms. They have unique diets. They have somewhat shorter lifespans and unpredictable lifespans, where in captivity, garter snake breeders, water snake breeders, any breeder of natricines, experience random deaths. They just pass away unexpectedly. So we don't know if that played a part in Nearly Headless Nick's death, like maybe it was just his time, or if it was from the lawnmower accidents. Um, we won't know, but we're still distraught by his loss because he was he was such a fighter. We are going to have him cremated and we're trying to think of the positives out of the entire experience. Like, we didn't even think he would survive as long as he did, let alone the first night. When we got him, he was so thin and he had that flap of skin up his side, which meant he was not only thin but also dehydrated. And seeing his injuries on his face, we couldn't believe he had lived as long as he did. And I honestly remember going downstairs the following morning and expecting to find a dead garter snake, but he was alive. And not only did he survive that lawnmower accident, but he, I would say, made as full of a recovery as he could have, all things considered, you know? And then I thought he wouldn't survive his surgery. When they removed that huge globular eye that risked rupturing and causing an infection, we decided to have that removed, but I'll admit I postponed that a few weeks because I didn't think he was gonna make it, but he did. He survived that surgery. Even the vet had had her doubts on whether he'd make it, but she did a great job in his surgery and he was a trooper, he survived it, and he made a full recovery from that too. So we like to think that he had as good of a life as he possibly could have given the incident that he went through. And he taught us so much during our time with him, during those two and a half years, I still can't believe we had him for that long. He taught us so many things. He taught us not only how to assist feed snakes since he never did get to the point where he was able to initiate a feeding response. I did have to assist feed him every single meal. Even though, after I got the head of the pinky or fuzzy, he was up to fuzzies eventually in his mouth, he was able to handle the rest of it. And being able to learn how to assist feed a snake has come in handy with other snakes as well, honestly. So he taught me that. He also, um, more obviously, taught me how to take care of a blind snake, which prepared us for this Brazilian rainbow boa that was born without eyes. We wouldn't have felt comfortable taking him in if we didn't have our previous experience with Nearly Headless Snake. His name, to go along with Nick's theme, by the way, is Mad No-Eyed Moody. I think we were much better prepared to take him on thanks to Nick. And on a larger scale, he taught us, and hopefully others in the reptile community, that blind snakes, whether they are born without eyes or hatched without eyes, or they go through an incident where they lose their vision, they're, they're worth working with to keep them around because they adapt and they survive and they have an otherwise normal life. That's another thing Nick brought to our attention is don't give up. 
he was a fighter. Despite everything he went through, he still, he still made it. So not only did Nick help us, but he helped countless others get over a fear of garter snakes and therefore he helped save the lives of other wild garter snakes because I can't tell you how many times people have told us or I've seen in comments or emails that people who were previously afraid of garter snakes found our, somehow stumbled across our channel and found Nearly Headless Nick's story and it helped them overcome that fear to the point where the next time they found a garter snake, instead of killing it, they moved it or they relocated it and saved its life because they realized that garter snakes aren't going to hurt them. So I'd say that thanks to Nearly Headless Nick's story, many other garter snakes have been saved as a result. Anyway, we're still reeling from the unexpected loss of Nick, but we felt it was important to make this video to update you guys on what happened, even though it's a shorter video and it's sad news, so I apologize about that. But we know how much Nick meant to a lot of viewers who were following his story, so. Nick, thank you for your time with us. You'll live, your legacy will live on in the hearts and minds of people from around the world. But we'll miss you, bud.